Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome back to Zombie Side Invader Part 2. Um, so if you missed Part 1, you want to go back and check it out. We went through the entire rule book, kind of over the basis of what, first of all, Zombie Side is, as well as what the new stuff Invader includes. Um, you know, mentioning like the different types of soldiers, civilians. Um, of course, they were fighting aliens instead of zombies, although they're called Xenos. They function the exact same way. They're, they're uh, more or less like zombie aliens. Um, I talked about like having uh, the concentrated attacks, different things like that. Um, the different type of weapons and... Uh, yeah, all the other all the other different stuff. So if if you haven't checked out and you're wondering what all that is, go ahead, check out part one. Part two, we're gonna actually go through. I'm gonna take a look at all the different maps, all the different characters, and all the different cards in the game. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail. Um, all right, so let's more or less just head into this. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna relook at the tokens. I kind of showed them off during the video one, but we didn't take a proper look at all of them. Um, so up on the top here, we have our doors. I did, I, I kind of made a little maybe mistake or flub in the first video about that. Is these are closed doors. So typically all doors are open. Uh, survivors can go into a room and close a door. Um, some of them have different colors. Um, and then the other side is if they're broken. So once your door is broken, you can no longer use them at all. Um, so that's just, that's one you know, a little bit different there is the doors are always typically open and you can shut them to keep zombies out. Then we have all our yellow noise tokens. Um, now on the back here we have, or down here we have all the red spawn zones. We have our exit zone. Um, and if we flip back to the other side we still have the four red ones. But then we have a green and purple spawn zone as well. Um, and these are just in case you want... Um, or some of the modes will have like extra ones that they don't activate till later or they activate with a special thing. I'm trying to remember what that is. This is the first player token. Just to keep track, so if you're playing, you're probably like six people. Uh, just so you can keep track of who went first last. Um, then on the bottom here we have our, our sentry and our turret markers. Uh, as well as objective markers. Um, and those, these will help you keep track of where things are supposed to be on the board. Objectives will be different ones you have to find throughout the, throughout the game. You have to hunt them down. That's just let you know there's something there. Um, like in one mode it could be food. In another mode it might be an item part. Uh, just depends on the mode. Then our remote controls for our box. And this is a special camouflage token for certain abilities. If I flip these over, all of the objectives have a little bit different uh, picture on the back. They're kind of like... Uh, an X in the middle. Um, right here they make like a square and there they, they're they arrow in. Um, and this is because they're all red. So you can have them flip down so you don't know which one. And then you have the two that have the colors. Um, and they did these for the reason because that way you can have something that's like, hey, I can see where six objectives are on the board, but I have to activate the blue and the white one to continue the game. So you don't know which of the six they're going to be. Um, so there's some modes that do that as well. So that's just our basis for all of our tokens. Uh, let's take a look at our maps. I'm going to zoom out a little bit actually. Alright, so here's our maps. Down in the corner it'll say which one we have. Uh, 01R. And then if we flip it to the other side, it's 01V. Um... I don't know the exact significance of R versus V. Um, outside of, they may have just tried to use different numbers or letter, different lettering systems than the other zombie side games, just so they weren't, every game wasn't the same, but I don't think that even stayed true either. Uh, but here, so we'll have some different stuff in each one. And this is also the numbers on there so that you can, um, when you're doing the uh, campaign, you'll say, put these four tiles together or six tiles or whatever. You know exactly which one to grab. Um, yeah, so we have the inside of a facility here. So it looks like we have uh, a big long hallway. We have like red security room. So actually it says security in case you need help remembering that. So that's where our, our uh, soldiers can go ahead and loot stuff. Otherwise anyone can loot from the other areas. Uh, let's put a little medical bay there. Um, 
you know, kind of cool. Uh, and if we flip back over to the other side, we have some outside world crane with a O2 and an airlock. Um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's, you know, gives us a nice U-shape to go around. Um, Alright, so map number two. So it's like the one side are kind of the other. So this is basically the exact same as the other one. Um, it does have like different uh, pictures on there. So it's not like they just re like recopy it. You can see like, this has like gloves and stuff down here. Uh, this has some different casters. This has a box outside. So although the shape of the board is the same, uh, the pictures are a little bit different. Um, but, you know, it helps, uh, you know, if you combine them, like, this direction, then they're one right across from each other. But then, again, you could have, like, the two halves like this, so then you'd have to go out and around. Um, or you could even have, like, have them conjoined like that, and then it's a big, long hallway. Um, maybe, like, out in the middle, you know. Um, Alright, so here's our other one. We have an L-shaped hallway. Uh, going around there. Um, there's another security room. Yeah, it looks like, uh, there's like a game room there. That's kind of cool. I love the details on these boards. Um, on all the different maps. So they're playing some cards in there. Uh, this is probably just a little bit of laboratory of some sort. You know, some of the, like, sci-fi beds. You know, so that's definitely cool. Board number three. So this one has, um... Only edge, edge spaces for the outside. Um, we got like a plant or a greenhouse. Um, these look like living quarters. We have like a table there. We have some beds. You know, with some different flags on there. Um, you know, different hangout areas. You know, being a hallway straight down the center. Uh, just also you note know, this has an opening down here on the bottom. So almost every room always has openings going to the outside of the board so you can mix and match them however um and then this one has a tunnel in the center so again you could pick them two airlocks put one each to the side making a longer hallway through here um you want to make one big long hallway so pretty cool number four we have another one like that big long hallway but this one has an airlock on either side um, so this could definitely add for some interesting, you know, outside terrain elements. Um, then we flip over, we have hallway down the middle with a bunch of rooms on the outside. Just take a little bit closer look at some of those rooms. You know, just very generic sci-fi. Like here's a shower, um, you know, cargo area, of course a security room. They tried to put in plenty of security areas so that, you know, you'll have them. Um, it looks like almost one, almost every map, if it, unless it's just an airlock in O2. Uh, so now here we have a corner for the outside. Um, so the only, the only little downside I would have with some of these is because whenever they have an airlock, they'll have an O2 room next to it. So it immediately takes up two spaces on the board. It could be a unique area. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. Alright, so here we have some more greenery, greenhouses. Um, this one's kind of fun because it's like L corridor, a little tiny one in the middle of a little like lab up in the corner that you can access. Um, and then these ones are on the outside, but you can't get from this corner to this corner. You have to go out and go around. So that could make for some interesting different... Uh, things plus you have a little L corner or a little square in the bottom there for outside All right, uh tile we have nine tiles total, so we're gonna try and go through these um, So there we have a little, couple inside outside areas So like an office um, She's so got some sort of pods like I don't know health pod something who knows for sure um, More medical stuff Little seating area. If we flip it over, um, so that's kind of neat. There's like I don't know what that's supposed to be. Some sort of supercomputer, maybe. Um, some more computer rooms, like server type rooms. Um, these can definitely play into the thematic. Now that that's the whole thing of all the zombie side games is, even though they have all these pictures, they don't 
typically like have you specify like this area, that area. Um, as anything, they, they can always drop it in there and say, oh, I got like, the cargo from this room or the objective from this room. Um, but for the actual gameplay element, they're all different. So here we got uh, exercise room. Got another gaming area. Uh, then we got some, I don't know, like storage cargo thing. It's kind of cool. Um, some just different stuff there. Flip that one over. We got another full interior. So there's a lot of interior. That, that's my other my other issue I had. There wasn't a lot for a game that involves going outside and having to have a special reason to go outside. They didn't. They I wish they had at least like one, one to two like full or almost half tiles of just outside. So you have some big outside areas that you have to cover. And then maybe if they even had some of the Xenos that went outside you know that'd be kind of a neat idea too um that's right here we'll take a little bathroom over here um looks like they're making some sort of i don't know like food storage maybe something up there uh another greenhouse because you have lots of different greenhouses meal area um then we looked at that one already all right tile number eight uh, security room, airlock, go outside. Uh, another, like, shower area, it looks like, bathroom. Alright, and if we flip that one over, we have another long hallway, security room. Uh, some science labs. I always need some, some of those in some sci-fi areas. Need some medical stuff. That was kind of creepy, like the grates open, something maybe coming out through there. Oh, and then our last tile. This one's kind of neat. Half hallway, half rooms, or third hallway, third rooms, third outside. So that gives us a little bit more um, extra. And then if we flip it over to the other side, we have a hallway with a bunch of other medical rooms. Cool. So those are our nine different tiles, and they're all reversible. Um, there is an option for pretty much every single zombie side game to buy a tiles only pack. So if you ever wanted to, like, once you get through all the campaigns and you're starting to play your own games and you're making your own little stories or missions, um, you always opt to buy a second tile pack so that that way you could use this side nine with this side nine at the same time. Um, so you can make, so part of it's not just you can make an 18 tile, um, area, like with just this game, but it's also so that you could use the same sides together and make even more, um, various things. So maybe if you wanted to have a lot more stuff with outside, you could buy more with the, you could use both sides to have the outside, but you could also have some of the neat inside ones. You wouldn't have to pick and choose all the time. All right, then I'm going to all right, so now we're going to look at all the survivors. Um, so I have the little miniature up there so we can kind of see what they look like. I can kind of rotate them around so we can see the other side. Um, definitely cool miniatures. Um, now, here's... Know, it's not really a complaint, I guess. You know, a nitpick about um, these characters is sometimes it's kind of like with these suited characters, the uh, soldiers with their big giant suits, it's sometimes hard to quickly tell which character belongs to which card um because they all have big giant suits of armor like the pictures they'll obviously look very different um because they're different colors and that uh but it can be kind of hard to tell now sometimes in the games you can flip them over and they'll give a better full picture um this one doesn't really do that as much either like the other side's not really that much um you can kind of tell this is Jared because you can kind of see his baseball bat. Plus, he has the helmet on and the other two characters don't have helmets. That's usually what you're looking for is, oh, which character has has a gun? Which one doesn't have a gun? Um, is one of them male? One of them female? Uh, so it's, it's It can be sometimes hard to tell. You'll see that more when we look at the next, the next two. Um, although, that being said... At a, at a glance, 
telling any of the characters apart when they're all just this gray color can be kind of hard. Um, all right, in the back of the book, we have, uh, Kirchner, we have skills. So these are going to be all the skills listed on the character cards, occasionally on some of the item cards. Um, so I will, as I go through, we'll read off what each one does. Um, now these, for the most part, stay the same from one zombie side game to the next. There are some of them that do change a little bit here and there, because maybe they, from one version to the next, they, based on how the game plays or the different rules, they had to change it. So it worked differently, or they changed the worded up, or they combined something. Um, I'm not going to point out if these changed from one of the other zombie side games, but if you played the other ones, you're going to recognize a lot of these working either the exact same or very similar. Um, all right, so looking at Jared here, a couple of things just to point out on the cards is we do have his three armor, um, and then death. Now you notice the meter goes up to six because they got because our characters in some of the other expansions or um, ways to get health bonuses it could increase you up to like six armor. Um, so they want to at least have the option of that. Um, top up here will show that he's a soldier as opposed to a civilian, which are yellow. Um, and then there are going to be other groups um, in some of the Kickstarter and expansions that have different symbols up there, which might represent different uh, teams or uh, groups they belong to. Um, now on the side, we have the four colors ability. We have blue, which is the one every character, every survivor starts with. Yellow, which is um, always one plus one action. Um, with maybe a very rare exception, um, this is a, pretty much a staple for zombie side. Is the second level you get, you always earn one extra action. So you go from your three to your four actions. Um, because you earn that pretty quickly. You get that usually after either completing one objective or killing two or three zombies. I think it's level five. Five or six, I think, is when he jumps up. Um, so you earn that pretty pretty quick after a first couple of combats. They just want to help you get that extra action right away. Uh, now when you hit orange, you get to choose between one of the two abilities. And when you hit red, you get to choose between one of the other three. After playing that ultra red mode, which we described in the first video, which means once you hit the end of your experience, which is 43, you can start back over. And then if you hit that orange again, you get to choose the second ability. Then you can choose the a second red if you got all the way back to your dial a second time. And then you could potentially, if you're still playing long enough, um, you could potentially get into the red again for the third time, go and lock all of them. Um, but having the optional for oranges and reds will make every character be that a little bit different and let you kind of play them how you want to. Um, you're not going to be able to take a character that's obviously meant for melee action. You can take them, just give them ranged weapons and only have them do ranged attacks or vice versa. You can have a ranged character just doing melee things. There's nothing to stop any character from not using a particular type of weapon or a particular play style. Um, but they're clearly going to be suited to do, do certain things. Um, and if you play against their type, they're not going to be as effective. Um, and at that point, like, we start with the base game, you only have six characters. You might have to kind of go over that. If you start picking up expansions and other sets, and you have 10, 20 different characters, you could probably find one that fits your um, niche to play. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start re reading through all these now that I blabbered on for long enough. So, Jared's first ability here is Shove. Shove says, a survivor can use a skill for free once during each of their turns. So, besides the regular three actions, they can use it for free. Um, select a zone at one range from your survivor. Both zones need to share a clear path, but no line of sight is needed. All as you know, standing in your survivor zone are pushed to the selected zone. This is not a movement. So what this does is it shoves all the zombies out of your area to an adjacent area. Um, this is actually a really nice thing to do. Hey, so this guy's kind of a tank in that sense. He gets into a battle, starts fighting things. Um, and then if he gets too overwhelming or at the end of his turn, he hasn't killed all the Xenos in his, in his tile or in his zone, he can shove them to the next area. 
Um, so at least in that way, they if they only have one movement, they have or one action like the tanks or the um, the workers, they have to then spend that one action just to get back to him. Uh, so that gives him you know a chance to then you know survive, or you can shove guys away and then not have to worry about paying that extra movement points to get away from stuff. Hey, I'm surrounded by six guys. I can shove them, you know, push them onto a different tile, and then now I can move freely away if I want. Um, so then in his orange, he gets plus one die for melee and charge. So the plus one guys are pretty much what they say. It's going to say plus one die um, action. So it'll be what, what particular action. Melee, ranged, combat, something. It says... Each survivor weapon rolls an extra die action with a specific type. Uh, dual weapons gain each gain a dice for each total of two dice per dual weapon action. So, this means if he's rolling a melee weapon that normally rolls three dice, he just can now roll four dice. He's using a ranged weapon and stay at whatever the range is. So, it's more or less saying he's proficient in melee weapons. Um, so, he can go ahead and do a little bit of extra damage with them. Um... And we have charge. Survivor can use a skill once during each of their turns for free. They can move up to two zones to a zone containing at least one Zeno. Normal movement rules apply. Entering a zone contains Zeno skill and your survivor's action. So this gets him a free move. Um, so it's kind of like he has shove to push things away and then he has charge to get closer. So between the melee and the charge, he can decide which way do you want to go. Do you want to be able to do you have a really good weapon? Maybe get charged. You can get in there quicker to use it. If you have a little bit weaker weapon, maybe take the uh, melee damage instead. You know, and then that way you're doing more damage. Um, but you could play around with that charging shove pretty fun. Uh, push guys away. Like, beginning of the turn, charge for free into them. Do all your actions. Then at the end of your turn, shove them away. Um, you know, or you could shove the current guys you're with away. And then... Um, you know, charging and take, take out a different guy somewhere else. Um, you know, so if, like, you have, two, like, two guys on your tile, you can shove them and go after a different guy. Like, hey, I don't want to deal with tanks right now. You can shove them away and then just go deal with somebody else. So, in his red, he has plus one die to range. Same as the melee, just gains a bonus for his ranged attacks. Plus one free combat action and plus one die roll for melee. Um... Alright, so we have plus one die roll. So we're going to get that bottom one first. So it says, Survivor adds one to the result of each die they roll at the action specific type. Uh, max result is always six. So when you have plus one die something, like if he has plus one die melee, instead of rolling, uh, let me grab a melee weapon here. We'll take a look at that. So... That means he would, instead of rolling two dice, he would roll three dice. So that gives him a better chance to um, hit that three more often. Because uh, he'll have three dice instead. But if he has plus one two die roll, that means he'd still only roll two dice with that ability. But if he rolls a one, it's now a two. It adds a one, so it gives him better accuracy. Um... That's basically the difference is. Now, if you combine both of those, so he has plus one die and plus one melee, he's going to hit a lot more at, often. Um, that second red one is free combat action. That gives him one extra combat action per turn. So now he normally would have his first regular three actions, then his fourth yellow action. So you have four actions he can do per turn, not including shove or charge if he chooses those, because those would be free. Um... But now he gets a fifth action that he could use, but he can only use it for combat. So he could move, open doors, gather things, but he always has at least one action strictly just for combat. Um, so yeah, if he needs to attack a lot more, you can definitely do that. If you're trying to do a lot of melee, you will go for your die roll for melee. If um, Now the range thing is, you can see he's kind of more of a melee character, but the range could be like a late game. Um, you get to the end and you're starting to, oh, they're, they're hoarding up too quick and we need to just get away. So maybe instead of having this guy keep charging in, make his range attacks a little bit better. Because that way he can, 
you know, kind of hang back and shoot guys from a distance. And if they get close, you can still melee. Um, but yeah, you can switch up your tactic at the end of the game. So that's kind of the whole whole point. They sometimes throw those in there. All right, let's hop to our next character. So we have Baraka. Um, now, one thing that Zombicide also likes to do is when you get to the Kickstarter and they have stretch goal characters that got unlocked, which are bonus characters only available that way unless you buy them separately, um, is they do a lot of homages to um, the franchises. So, like, regular Zombicide did just different actors and stuff like the Western uh, zombie side did western characters uh fantasy did fantasy stuff this does sci-fi characters they don't usually have too many homage characters in the base game they try and have them be wholly original characters but some of these are clear just as some designs that are gonna maybe look or feel like something else and i'm not saying she is um but yeah if they look like oh that kind of looks like a character from that that's why they like to do that uh but you can see her so she has this big giant backpack on um and a gun out now you can kind of tell like you put her next to him like at a glance you can obviously tell they're two different characters one has a holding gun one has a gun and a melee weapon um one has a helmet one doesn't again so you can easily tell if they're next to each other oh that's my character that's mine that's also why they have the little base rings to help you out but when you're trying to match them to the cards you know it can sometimes get a little bit more difficult. And I'll show you when we get to the next guy. It becomes a little bit more tricky. Alright, so uh, Baraka here starts with the ability Lucky. It says, for each action the survivor takes, you may choose to reroll all dice in additional time. Then your result replaces previous one. The skill stacked with the effect of equipment that all rerolls. So this can be, um, you know, Lucky. It's what it is. You roll really bad. You have... You know, your uh, three dice to roll, and you roll really low for all of them. You don't hit with anything, or you hit with one of the three. You could opt to re-roll. Now, again, that's the thing. You don't only re-roll the bad dice. You have to re-roll everything. So, there's also a potential that you might re-roll worse. You know, like, if you missed everything, always re-roll. But if you have three dice, and you missed two two of the three, hopefully you'll roll at at worst, you only roll one, and it's the same result, but you could also miss all three again. Uh, but then again, you could hit all three of them. So it's, you know, it's what it is. All right, then in her orange, she has plus one guy for combat. So where Jared had the ability to get one dice for melee and then later one dice for ranged, she just gets one guy for combat. So she can use that for either ranged or melee. So she kind of, like, Right off the bat, she can be used for whichever. Where do you need her? What do you need her to do? Um, but our second ability instead is Remote Controlled Sentry Gun. Um, so, Remote Control Whatever Machine, it says, the survivor may perform a machine action with the machine of indicated type, uh, bot, sentry gun, or all. So she can control the sentry gun, which will be... This guy here, which we'll look at a little bit later uh, when we're done with all the characters. Um, she gets a free action to be able to use that guy from somewhere else in the thing. So basically, you plant the sentry gun somewhere, um, and then now she can use it at a distance. So that's kind of neat. So it's, it's, it, it might be like, hey, do we want her to use that, or do I want her to be doing the other stuff? Um, and then she gets the red, she has plus one die for combat. So now you can have her giving, potentially... Two, two extra dice every combat, which can be very powerful. But she also gets remote control bot. So she can use, or you can have her controlling any, either of the bots every turn. Um, so it's kind of a neat little mechanic for her. And then her last ability is sniper. So sniper may freely choose targets of all their ranged attacks. Friendly fire is ignored. So in the first video when we went over talking about um, friendly fire means, so if you're attacking into a group, if you're meleeing, you can pick and choose who you target. But if you are shooting a gun, you have to attack the biggest target first um, and then go down. But if you roll any misses, you automatically hit your friends, 
with Sniper is being, hey, this person's at least good enough. They, they might not, they still might have to hit the big fat guy first, but they know better than not shoot their teammates. Um, so her, with her having extra combat guy here and Sniper, you could definitely sit back um, and shoot people or even a sentry gun Sniper. She can just sit back and be shooting into the group. Um, but I always remember the red is at the very end. So it's not a skill you're going to have for most of the combat. Alright, let's jump into our next character. So I'm going to put him up right next to her um, before we jump in. So we have Magnus. So now this is what I mean. Like at glance, you're going to look at these two. Obviously, he's a bigger, bulkier. He has a bigger gun. Um, you can tell that they have different backpacks. So yeah, they don't look the exact same. But at, at glance, if you're trying to figure out which one of these two belongs to this card, yeah, you can kind of map, hey, look, there's the gun. You can kind of see maybe that, oh, that's the guy's face, that's the girl's face. But again, at quick glance, it's a little bit harder to do that. Um, all right. All right, so yeah, now, see, so look at this guy here. He starts with six armor points, so he is your tank for the game. Um, you get him, he's going to be able to take some extra damage. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Then he has plus one action. Then his orange is one free-ranged action. So again, he can use it, shoot something for free every turn. Um, or plus one die roll for ranged. So there's that, there's that option. Do you want to be able to do, you know, three, three range shots each turn? Or do you want to be able to only do two? You know, but you know, like, you want to have that extra range shot every turn, or do you want to have that range shot be more powerful? Um, then when he hits in the red, he has plus one die for combat. Um, so then you could make his combat more powerful, um, or you could have remote control all. So he can control either bot in there. So then you're having him already sitting back being ranged, you can control any of the box and help out that way. His last ability is Unstoppable, which is a new one. So it says, Survivor does not spend extra actions when they perform move actions outside of a zone containing Xenos. Uh, entering a zone still ends their action. So it just does it, let, it lets him move freely away from guys. So if he's already being a tank and he's taking extra damage with guys next to him, um, he can run away. Now, although he has the extra health, all his... Like, lots of his abilities are kind of aimed towards him standing back taking damage. So rather than being the traditional tank, like, run into the mix of the crowd and take damage and absorb hits for everybody, I think his idea is more supposed to be, you know, I'll, I'll stand at the end of this hallway, shoot with a bunch of guns, just to create a bunch of noise that's going to draw enemies towards me while everyone else gets away. And then... He can be sitting there as they're slowly trying to move towards him. He can be shooting them all down while he's making noise, bringing guys towards him. Um, then if they do happen to get close to him too fast, he can at least absorb a couple of hits. And then if you're like, at the end, if you have Unstoppable, at least you could run away, back up a quick, and redo that again. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, I think, his idea. Um, so that's definitely it. So we have three soldiers. Then we have three civilians. So let's look at our first civilian is Mitsuki. Um, yeah, she's got a little, like, tiny radio walkie there. She's kind of like the, uh, looks like she might be a uh, um, communications officer. She has a little backpack with her. Um, all right, yeah, so they'll have the yellow up there. Now, these guys only have two health, so they're not going to want to get really close into combat, but they can search any room so they can be, well, the... Um, soldiers are running around kind of doing the combat. These guys can be trying to maybe get to doing the objectives. Um, you know, picking up weapons to find for the soldiers. And doing stuff like that. Now, it's not to say that that's their only task. You have one of these guys. You don't have to only just play them as being, like, support class. You can have them run out. Just make sure you don't get hit too often. Um, so she starts with remote control for the bot. So that's pretty cool. She gets to control bot right off the bat. I mean, we had two other guys that did, but they had to wait until they were in the red. Um, in her yellow, or sorry, her orange, she has one free machine action or one free move action. 
So that's kind of cool. She already has a way to control the bot. Now she can do it once for free as well. Um, so she can either spend a point um, to activate the bot. Or now she can have a free one. She can activate that bot more often. Or she can move around quicker. If you need her to have that extra free move action. And then when she hits red, one free ranged action. Um, plus one die roll to range or sprint. Uh, Sprint is a new ability. So the survivor can use a skill once during each of their turns to spend one move action with the survivor. They may move two or three zones instead of one. Each zone or enter a zone contains zero, zero skill ends their movement. So this character is all about getting a round. And that's kind of the whole point of it. Um, use that bot to kind of protect her. Um, so this is, this is the bot here. At least in this one. So the big, big giant box. He's twice her size. Can kind of use, use him as like a guardian to protect her. Well, she gets to run around, you know, collecting objectives, doing stuff like that. With her free move and possibly her sprint, um, she could definitely get around the board pretty quick. Alright, so that's Mizuki. Up next, we have Cole. Cole is our, you know, stereotypical, uh, roguish captain type character, you know. Um, yeah, like, just at first glance, like, he reminds me, he's kind of like, oh, so he's kind of like the, uh, like, Han Solo or Malcolm Reynolds type looking character. Um, you know, I also think he's maybe a little bit of, uh, um, Star Wars, Guardians of the Galaxy is like, kind of like the jacket on. You know, but he's like the the, the road hero of of the movie. Um, but yes, yeah, so he's got he has double guns out. Um, so Cole gets a free search action, which lets him do just that, get an extra search every turn. Um, yeah, so just you know, he can do it. You know, normally you can only search once per turn. He can do an extra search so he can find stuff where you even quicker so he's a good scavenger um then we have in the orange one plus one guy to range and remote control all so he's gonna utilize the robots to help him out keep him alive either tanking him or shooting stuff um but he's also gonna stay at a distance he's trying to find stuff he doesn't want to get in close and do too much um is ready as plus one guy for combat Plus one free combat action and plus one die roll to range. So, no, other than the search action, nothing we haven't seen before. Um, and that's typical for zombie side base games. Um, you have to wait either till the expansions, and even then, if it's like um, a base game expansion, like a sequel game, they don't usually go too much outside of a base game. You actually have to get to the Kickstarters um, or special. Extra expansions like Death Starters Pack, things like that, to get like the really interesting, unique characters. Um, because they want you to just get used to the game playing here. Um, not saying these guys are bad, they're they're all solid characters, but you get some like more crazy, wacky abilities than the other ones. All right, and then for our last survivor, we have, of course, who's gonna look like this is Vivian. Um, of course, she's, you know, your, your heroine, um, but she has that Ellen Ripley Aliens vibe. Um, and it's the long hair, you know, type of thing, you know. Again, like I said, you don't usually always do om specific homage characters in the base game, but I think this is supposed to yeah, be like you have your, your, her your heroine, your heroine character in here. Um, so she starts with Taunt. Taunt is one of my favorite abilities in this game. Uh, so I can use this skill for free once during each of their turns. Uh, select the zone up to two zones away from the survivor, having a clear path to the survivor, like no walls, no closed doors. Um, no line of sight is needed. Um, so they have to be, they have to be able to get to you. They don't necessarily have to be able to see you. Um, all Xeno standing in the selecting zone and immediately gain extra activation. They try and reach the taunted survivor by any means available. Taunted Xenos ignore all other survivors, do not attack them, and leave zones they're standing in if they need to reach the survivor. So the whole point of this character, or the taunt ability at least, is 
um, to bring guys to you. So sort of like we had Magnus with his gun where I said, oh, you can make a lot of noise and it'll kind of draw guys towards the noise. They'll always still go after whoever they can see first. So even if he has five noise tokens on him, if they can see someone else is two spaces away and he's eight spaces away, they're going to go after the guy two spaces away. They're going to be like, I don't care that you're shooting a gun. I'm going after this guy I can grab. So taunt will help you pull guys. Hey, um, that guy's about to die. Or, oh, they're going in the room where we're trying to scavenge something. And we can't, we can't, uh, do an ob can't search for things. Or, you know, he, she can pull guys away. So that's definitely a fun ability. Um, so to help her out with that, she has either one free melee action or control, remote control bot. So you can use that bot to help protect her, um, or hit something if it gets close. Um, then in her red, she gains plus one die to rain, range, one free range action, and shove. So I'll help her out in the late game. Um, if they get too close to her, she can do that, and then she can also back up and shoot guys at a distance. Uh, so kind of a, kind of a cool, interesting character. Alright, so up next we're going to look at the bots. All right, so here we have the uh, Falshang Sentry Gun. So, uh, the rules in the books I've written keep really Sentry Gun and Bok. Um, and then different ones will have names. So this sector is one of each, but in the some of the expansion as well as Kickstarter content, there were more different varieties. So if you pick up everything, you're going to have multiple different guns and bots to choose from. But in the base game, you only have one of each type. Um, so I have different stats listed on there, much like a weapon, it's going to show it's a ranged weapon which shoots 1 to 3 distance away, rolls 4 dice to hit 4, and does 1 damage. It also has some other different keywords on it, um, and one of those is low profile. So, uh, sentry gun is just showing it's the word sentry gun, so if something's looking for it, it does state that in there. Prototype, because there are things that reference the prototype weapons. Um, the those aren't actually in the keyword area. And then low profile, though, is a special skill, which says survivor can't, can't get hit by friendly fire. Um, ignore them when shooting the zone they're standing on. So, basically drop a sentry gun down, or wherever it's put. Um, then, uh, if zombies or the Xenos are all swarming it, and you're shooting that area, you don't have to worry about damaging your gun. Um, luckily though, for whatever reason, it doesn't produce any noise when it fires. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's shooting some sort of pulse beam. So on the back, it's going to list what its actions are. Um, ranged action. Use the falshing weapon. Uh, ignores dark zone rules and can fire from exterior zones. Uh, so if it gets put up there. No, a survivor standing on the falshing sentry zone may control it as if they had the corresponding skill or remote token. Um, so yeah, that lets them kind of move them around where they need to, or uh, lets them use it right there, um, as like a, almost like a gun itself. But if you have the remote one, you can use it as a, as a distance. Uh, otherwise, it's not like it's just going to fire off by itself, is basically what it's saying. Um... So if I look on one of the maps, I just want to point this out quick. Um, yeah, so if like, you look at one of the missions here, it'll show you where they start. So like the sentry starts there, the bot starts down there. Um, so they kind of have wherever they're going to be. Um, Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I was just trying to see if there's a way to pick up and move the sentry. As far as I can tell, there's not. Um, so wherever a sentry gun is at, it's just where it's at. Um, but they do have... Um, so the other thing with the sentries and the sentry guns and the boxes, they basically have one health, which is why you don't list health on there. Uh, so if they take one damage, they are destroyed. Um, again, because this has low profile, means you won't be able to shoot it. So, uh, they, like, zombies can get in and kill it. Um, they do have this, though, as well. A machine performs at least one action to a machine activation token. Machine is considered to be a survivor as long as it possesses the token. Um, a machine without activation token is ignored by Xenos. So, if the machine is... So, 
if the sentry gun is just sitting around and nobody's used it, no one's going to go after it. But if you start firing it with people, then the the Zima can be smart and be like, hey, that thing's trying to kill me. I should go destroy it. Uh, but don't even do it while it's active and moving. And then, like, so if you let it sit there, cool off for a turn, and then don't use it again, they'll kind of be like, oh, well, never mind. I'll go back to that guy over there. Um, so you can use it as a distraction. All right. Then we're going to pull that one off, and we're going to look at our Peacekeeper bot. This is our, our big in here. Alright, so this guy's a pretty big dude. A uh, little face shield. It's kind of cool. He's got like triple crab legs. Big backpack full of everything you'd ever want. Uh, little grabby claws are pretty cool. Uh, he's got a third one in there. Um, so he has bot, prototype, and low profile as well. Now he can do melee or ranged. Um, so his melee is at 0, 3 dice, 4 accuracy, 2 damage, and his range is 1 to 3, 5, 5, and 1. So he has less, he gets to roll one more die than the sentry gun, but he also has to hit, roll a little bit higher. But he does have the option of doing melee. Um, so now we flip to the back side, we can see what his abilities are. So he has actions to move, you can move him around, use the melee or the ranged actions. Um, Peacekeeper may move freely alongside his controlling survivor uh, if they don't use movement skills. So if you're on the same space as him he and you move a space, you can basically bring him with you um, versus having to spend a separate action. If you have the remote control though, you can then move him on a separate uh, thing altogether from a distance. Um, so it's definitely a cool mechanic there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, if I can find it in the book, I can never find anything in the book when I'm actually looking for it. That's usually how that goes. Um, we had mentioned for the Dark Zone, and I kind of bypassed that in the base game, because it doesn't play, it does play a part in here. Um... Yeah, this is... Okay, so here's why I didn't mention Dark Zone. It says, The circular equipment allows these wielders to trace lines to Dark Zones. These are special zones where darkness blocks line of sight. They're not featured in this box, but in zombie side invader expansions. Um, so normally you can see... If you look down a hallway, you can see down the entire hallway. Um, and some of the expansions, some of the tiles in zones will be have dark areas. You can't see through a dark area. Um, it's essentially good. So if like there's a dark hallway, um, like how the lights turn out halfway down the hallway, you can see to the beginning of the area, but you can't see three tiles into dark. Um, robots, on the other hand, don't care. You can assume they're using like heat signatures or something like that. So that is why they mention those. All right, then we're gonna start hopping in to all of the different weapons. I'm just gonna leave that guy up there so we have something to look at. So we start off with gray cards. These are your starting weapons. We are going to start with four cattle prods. Uh, so they're going to have use your hand, no silence, energy weapons. Um, you know, two get uh, zero range because they're melee, of course. Two, five, one. And you can dual wield them. And then we'll have two SMGs, uh, which make noise and they're bullet guns. Um, so these are the Star Wars. You start out, you basically give these to each of your starting character. So each one gets one. Um, so it kind of helps to figure out what character works best with them. And then as someone picks up a different weapon, you can go ahead and ch transfer these, change these other characters if you're next to each other. So, um, like, if I'm playing uh, Magnus, who really wants ranged weapons, uh, he wants to set a distance, you only have two uh, SMGs. If we pick up a second weapon, you can either opt to, you know, give him the better gun, then that way he can do better range attacks, or you could give somebody else the other that weapon and then give them the, him the second uh, SMG. Then he can dual wield them. So now he might not do as much, uh, might because he only just roll two dice, but he'd be able to roll four dice every turn. Doesn't have great accuracy, but you know maybe that's better for 
you know, what you're doing. Um, at least until you find some better weapons. Same thing like the melee weapons. Um, as you pick up better, better weapons. So if you pick up something better, you could give the other tackle prod to somebody else. Then at least they could dual wield tackle prods. So one guy has a better sword or whatever. Um, some sort of bladed weapon, baseball bat or whatever. Um, then one of the other characters could at least be running around dual wielding tackle prods so they can at least have the potential to do more damage. Um, until you can finally get, get to the point to replace these. Um, so those are your starting weapons. Then we have, uh, O2 tanks, and we have six of those, because you only need one per character. Um, so he's equipped to a body slot. When equipped to a body slot, your survivor may go to an exterior zone. So essentially, just get your guy to the, um, O2 area and get these. So unless you, some for some reason, discard one of these or choose to get rid of them, You'll always have them, and if you do discard it, you just set it off to the side. You just have to go to another O2 area to pick one up. Um, they're not like a one, one-time one use item. Um, so that's kind of how that goes. Um, Alright, we'll set those off to the side. So your main weapons will be blue on the back. Um, so we'll have two copies of so They'll be blue on the front as well, just to help differentiate them. So whenever you search a zone, you'll draw through this pile and you'll pull out one of these weapons. Um, she has slide to melee weapon, you know, three guys, three accuracy. Um, does energy, so you can actually, of course, because I think all the melee weapons are energy because they're not bullets. Um, which is the two different types. Um, but we do get some other fun stuff in here. We have three copies of the MREs, uh, which is... Uh, meal ready to eat. Um, I don't know why I had to read that. I, knew, I should know what that was. So you get a discard just to gain 3 XP. So this, can, again, can be a very helpful thing to, like, hey, kick your character up to that next level to gain that ability. Um, hey, I need to get up to that orange area so I can activate that bot or get my extra range. Um, or maybe you have another character that's, you know, struggling, you know, like, kind of searching and doing this stuff and struggling to get um, up farther because they can't get enough kill. You can hang it off to them and let them gain some extra energy quick. Um, the next one we have is you have three copies of Plenty of Bullets. So this is an equipable item. Um, so it has that little plus sign. So this attaches this direction next to a gun. So like if I had um, that MSG, basically you, you put it on your board, on your character board like this. Um, and then it gets a bonus to it. Um, so it attaches to a bulleted weapon. It says you may reroll uh, once all attacks with this weapon. The new result takes the place of the previous one. So as long as you have this equipped with that weapon, you can keep rerolling every turn. But if you ever take that weapon off and switch it out, then the bullet card becomes um, unattached. And now you have two separate cards. So keep that in mind for your backpack. Um, but that's definitely fun. They've had cards like that before in the other zombie side, but they didn't, like, directly attach to a weapon. They're kind of just, like, one-use abilities. These are kind of neat to get to attach. Um, we have two copies of Search Drone. Uh, so you can search anything, or you can search in any type of zone in the building. Um, you can search in any type of building zone. So this is more for your soldier characters that lets them search areas outside of the security area. Um, but just helps them, uh, yeah, get, do some extra searching. Then we have two copies of the search light, which we looked at before. So a search can do two different things. Draw two cards or trace lines of sight to dark zones. So the dark zones, again, won't matter to one of the expansions. But getting to draw two extra cards is helpful. Um, you can find stuff a little bit quicker. Um, we have four copies of uh, Ablative Armor. Discard just to ignore one damage. Now, this is something that is not typical of zombie side games. Um, most, uh, like, the core zombie side, the modern, like, you know, urban one, doesn't have pretty much any armor cards. You, you're taking damage and you're dying. Uh, the fantasy one... Added a couple of armor because you have some medieval armor, um, but it still wasn't like it worked a little bit differently because you got it and you had to roll dice to prevent damage. Um, versus this is just discard. 
Um, so this isn't as maybe good as that armor, but then again, that's like medieval like plate mail and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a cool idea because you can give it to your um, any of your characters to help them just survive by extra, get, giving them an extra point of health. You know, who's gonna argue about having extra health? We have three shotguns. Sorry, assault shotguns. Um, so, you know, it's kind of one-to-one -one range. Um, it's kind of interesting that it says that. Uh, it just has to have a distance between this and to that. So you can only shoot one space away. Um, but it does pretty decent damage, though. Three, three, and one. Um, so versus some of the other weapons, which can shoot one, two, like three or four. Um, this can only hit close up, but it does pretty good damage. So now if we compare that to our SMG we start with, which is the same range. Um, but you only you get one more die and you have a lot better accuracy. So this is a lot better weapon to upgrade to. Um, we have four canisters. So these attach to a flamethrower. Um, and they create the Hellfire, which destroys an entire zone. So that's the only thing they're good for. So basically, you get a hold of these, hang on to them, until you find the Flamethrower, and then um, pass them off to whoever has the Flamethrower to take out some of the big guys as quickly as possible, or giant groups. Um, our next one, we have two copies of a Chainsaw. Uh, what's zombie killing without a Chainsaw, right? Um, melee, but it has five dice, but it does five, uh, has five accuracy. Not super accurate, but it does do two damage for every one hit. Um, so I can definitely do some incredible damage. One, two, three, four, five. We have six copies of the energy cell. Uh, so we have more of these than we did the, um, than the bullet one, but that's because there's less bulleted weapons than there are energy weapons. So you may reroll re all attacks with this weapon. Your result takes place of the previous one. Then we have two copies of our aforementioned flamethrower. So with the canister, says discard, attack the canister to create a hellfire zone in the targeted zone, not exterior, because uh, there has to be oxygen. Um, the buzz is just one to two spaces away, so it doesn't do any other damage. So it's kind of neat because it's a super powerful thing, and you need to canister to do it. Um, but other than that, it just kind of sits around and does nothing in your inventory. Um, so there's that. Then we have three copies of the heavy cutter melee weapon. So we have an upgraded melee blade. Uh, Two dice, three accuracy, does two damage, and you can dual wield them. We have three heavy shotguns. So do one to two spaces, two, four, with two damage. So definitely upgrading those. Um, so we have, I have some of my, my cards got mixed around. We have two light machine guns. So again, five dice, pretty good. Yo, know, it has that five accuracy, but it also does up to three spaces away. Um, but now, if you, you always keep it this mind, you roll five dice and you get three of them that hit. You just did three damage. Yo, know, so that means you could have, you could take out um, you could have taken out three three workers or uh, three runners or one of those guys and a tank. Um, but also we have that concentrated attack in this game as well, where you can choose one guy, and then now if you roll three of them hits, now instead of doing three damage, you've just done six damage to that guy. So even if you concentrate and you only roll one of the five only hits, you do two damage. So that's enough to take out any of the small guys. So that concentrated attack is going to be super, super important in this game. We have another slug, so it's like we had four of them. Um, just one got lost. We do have two more SMGs. So we had the ones from the, um, the basic. And we do get, pick up two more of them. It has the exact same stats. So typically whenever they have a car with the same name, sometimes the, um, the starter equipment is representing other things. Because they're always laying around. You just get a better version of it. Um, then we have two sniper rifles, which has the sniper ability on there, so you get to choose your target. 
Um, so that's definitely fun. Um, one to three. Only one guy. So you need to sniper rifle. You're you're aiming, you're taking your time, but it does two damage. Um, so that's definitely great to have plus one to rolling so you can shoot two 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 bullets at once. Um, and then the last bunch of cards we have in here are bad cards. So we have Mold, two copies of Mold Spawn, one Hunter. It says, place one Hunter on each active Mold Zone, draw another equipment card. So they're kind of like surprised that you're searching an area, and instead of finding a weapon or an item, oh crap, we rusted something up and we awoke uh, a Hunter coming out. We have two of them for Mold Spawn Tank. And we have two of them for Mold Spawn 1 Worker. Um, and then finally we have one copy of Mold Spawn 2 Workers. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of active zones. These cards can be very bad because they're going to spawn more guys in more areas. Alright. Then the last set of equipment we'll look at are the red ones, which are special prototypes. Uh, which are found in certain objectives. Uh, so there's, not, there's only a couple of them. There's only four to be exact. Um, so these are more powerful. So we have the prototype sniper rifle. Um, which says prototype what weapon. Of course sniper. Choose your target. Requires an attached energy cell to use. So it does make it a little bit harder to do. But if we compare it to the sniper rifle. Um, so let's scoot that over a bit. I can maybe put both of them up. Maybe. If it wants if it wants to work with me nope there we go um yeah so they both do so what's the upgraded version like what why is it better to have um so a couple reasons why it has one better range it's always nice all the rest of the stats are the same um, but the two other things is going from a bullet type to an energy type so now you can use that outside um, so that's definitely helpful as well. If you're trying to escape, you can get outside or you can shoot from outside in or inside out. Um, plus it also doesn't make noise. That is definitely a super helpful upgrade. So yeah, it's not like it became like the ultimate destroying thing, but it does, it does get a little bit better. Um, and same thing, we have the prototype light machine gun. Um, we have the prototype heavy shotgun. And the prototype assault shotgun. So all of them they change to quiet um, energy weapons. But you have to have an energy cell to use it. Uh, so if you have an energy cell currently attached to a different weapon. And you get one of these. You just have to unequip them. And then re-equip it with this. Um, so those are all of our weapons. Next we're going to look at all of the bad guys. All right, we're going to go ahead and look through all the Xenos and the Xeno spawn deck. Um, so each of the workers, the runners, or sorry, the hunters, um, and the tanks all have seven, seven of each different mold um, or mini. Um, so we have a lot of the workers. We have, you know, then a decent amount of tanks and hunters. Um, and then one big abomination. Uh, so the hunters themselves are they're the they're the basic ones. They're like your like in zombie language, they'd be your regular walker zombie as they're called in the other zombie side games. They're slow, they don't do much damage. They deal one damage, they take one go eliminate, and they give you one experience point. So we have a couple different uh versions of them. Um so the backs of the cards are spawn decks are gonna look the same. That when you buy expansions and you get other different versions of zombies, you can mix and match them. And you don't know which one you have. Um, and then on the front of the car, if you pull this, it's going to show what you spawn. So you spawn a worker zombie. So you grab one of the miniatures. It doesn't matter which one. Um, so we're going to set a second one up there. If I zoom back out just a bit, you can see them. Uh, go a little different pose. Um, and then whatever color is, is what... Whatever your highest level character's experiences, survivor's experience, is what, you'll, what you will summon. So at the beginning of the game, you draw one of these, you're only going to summon two. Um, or spawn two, because you only have two. Uh, everyone should be in the blue. But then once one person hits yellow, then you'll always do four. Um, now the top here is also a number. And that's just a... It, it's good for two reasons. One, it helps you keep track of your missing any cards, because they're all numbered to the sets. 
um, plus that if you want if you want to sort out um, a base game from an expansion or something like that, but you just pull the higher numbers out. The other half is because they'll tell you like, oh, if you want to play easier, only play with cards one through this. You want to play harder, um, only play with like the later half of the deck, or you could play with all of them and have some hard, some difficult. Um, now all of the worker spawn cards are going to be the exact same. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So we got six to start with. They're all going to have the exact same numbers on them. Now this is a, a change from the original classic zombie side. Something that's been picked up in later, more current zombie side games. Where they always have the same numbers on them. Um, because some of the older ones, they and they're always one character. Some of the original zombie side, if you played classic. Um, you draw a card and you... The card would have all four different types on there, and they always change the number. This just makes it a lot more slimline. You can pick up, immediately see, I need six spawn, worker spawns. Um, so we got those. So let's uh, pull these two down. Let's look at two more different models. So, although, I mean, the poses aren't, like, super varying different. Um, but they're different enough. But again, it doesn't make a big difference. You just have to have... Um, one of them. So there's seven of each of these. So that's five, you know, it's 35 different zombies. So you can have 35. If you ever run out of miniatures, um, like you have to spawn more because you're not killing them quickly enough and you have to keep spawning them, which could happen if you draw too many of these eights in a row, uh, if you get that high or even too many sixes in a row, uh, and you spawn all of them because you haven't been killing it because they're going to spawn every turn. Um, then the Abomination actually gets to activate again. So the big guy will either come into play or he'll get extra turns, which is bad. Um, so that's one reason why you might want to keep killing things as you go along. Alright. So then up next we have four tank cards. Um, the tanks are our big beefy guys. Um, so in terms of classic zombie side, they're either brutes or fatties. They originally called them fatties, but now they they changed the name to brutes because it's a little bit more all encompassing. You see, these guys have all these big tentacles, um, but they are slower. Um, they're slower in the sense of because they they're just bigger. They deal take two damage to kill, so they're a little bit harder to take out. They deal two damage, so they can take out a um, civilian character in one hit. So you guys definitely want to make sure civilians stay away from these guys unless they have some body armor on. Um, and they only still only give you one experience. Um, which I think is the difference between some of the other games. I think usually the bigger guys give you more experience. Um, but for whatever reason, this game changed that. I'm going to kind of set him off to the back there. And we'll look at the other one. He's in more of an attack mode. All these tentacles everywhere. Creep, creepy horrors. Um, I kind of like this this idea. I'm, I'm glad they didn't try and go with like like generic like gray or the green Martian type aliens. Um, or try and do like the xenomorph alien from the movie Aliens. Like you kind of like Cthulhu almost monstrosities are kind of fun. Um. Up next, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five copies of the Hunter cards. Now, these guys, now, if you notice, all the numbers on all these are roughly the same. Now, you only get two here. Um, some of them change a little bit. Like, you get two there. I think you spawned four in the yellow for the workers instead. Um... The hunters are kind of special, so they're like the sort of like an in between of the two, um, and they kind of have like more of a forward motion um, to look like they're moving. Um, so they still have one health, like a worker, and they deal one damage, like everything else. And they only give you one experience, but they have their special rule that have two activations. So during their turn, they will try and move twice, attack twice, or move then attack. So you have to be careful on where you are. Um, otherwise, these guys could get in very close to you very quickly. Um, so yeah, those are those guys. I'm going to pull these down. We're going to grab the next set. So 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, six copies. Total of the Spoiler Abomination. Now you might be like, well, why? Why do I have more of these than I have some of the other ones? Um, because there's only one miniature. The other ones, you're spawning a bunch. Uh, this, you're always only going to spawn one. So here is this big guy. This guy is huge and he is gross. Um, I don't even want to know what all these different things are because giant tentacles everywhere. Everything is sticking off of him. Mold growing all over him. So I, here's him in comparison to a worker, which is about the same size as a survivor. So let's grab him and compare him to a survivor. So this is one of our Marines. You know, our soldiers. So you can see how big he is compared to those guys. Um, yeah, so when these guys spawn, it says all abominations on the board gain one extra activation. So now, in this game, there's only one abomination. Um, but you can play, if you get expansions and other stuff, you can have more abominations. You can have several different characters going around. Um, it says, if you have a spoiler abomination, spawn it. Um, if you don't, nothing happens. So, essentially, here's how you, you got to, like, uh, some of the other games you just have, the other zombie side games, you just have an abomination card. And if you draw the abomination, um... You, you pick an abomination from the board and they all activate. This one's specific to the spoiler. Um, so it's trying to, trying to bring him into play. Now, the abominations are the big, kind of like the big boss guys almost. So this guy has some special abilities. Uh, so he takes three he deals three damage. So he can kill any, any character in one hit. Doesn't matter. Uh, unless they have some sort of damage. He deals, takes three damage to kill. Um, but he gives you five experience points if you get rid of him. Um, so it says, the damage three weapons required to eliminate a spoiler. No weapon features such damage value in the game, so at least not in here. Now, there's stuff that will, um, uh, there are, there are some weapons that will do, do multiple damages, but nothing that will do three in one shot. So, what's, what that's saying, if I shoot a gun... And it has one damage, and I roll three successes. I get to do three damage, but I'm doing one damage, one damage, one damage. I'm not doing three damage um, applied to a character. So, um, yeah, I most you could ever do is get a two weapon thing, and you could do multiple hits. Um, now you can also take them all with a concentrated attack, though, because. You could then roll a 1 and then roll 3 successes and it could do 3 damage that way. So it's possible. Otherwise you have to just set him on fire with the Hellfire which is the Flamethrower. Um, now he has a special activation. It says, Spoiler Abomination spread mold across the corridor zones, not exterior zones, um, and rooms. So just on the inside buildings. Whenever a Spoiler Abomination stands in a room or corridor without mold, set an active mold token. It is now a mold zone. If the zone has an inactive mold token, it flips to its active side instead. So if you happen to like flip one over, he's going to flip it back over. Um, so that's what he's doing. Alright, then the next thing we have, we've seen these before. We have a mold 1 spawn worker. Uh, mold 2 spawn, mold spawn 2 of them. Now this is where the, in conjunction with um, the spoiler, he's going to keep creating them. So he's going to create... Spawning a lot more of these every turn. Um, spawn a tank and spawn a hunter. Um, so that's our first half of the deck. That's like the easy deck. Um, and then if we go through, we have one, two, three, four, five, six copies of the more difficult set. So this is the spawns that worker spawns again, but now it is instead of two, four, six, and eight, it is four, six, eight, and ten. So you're just spawning more of every time. Uh, same thing with four tanks, which have more. They just start a little bit higher. So it's got two and two. Now it's four and four. We have five hunters. It's the same thing. Just the lower levels get a lot more spawning. We have six more abominations. And then if we look at our last bunch, we have one worker, two workers, one tank, one hunter. 
Um, so they'll stay the same. So basically, now you can, again, you can play with all the cards mixed together. So you might get some lower ones, you might get some harder ones right away. You could play just the easy half or just the hard half. You just play the hard half, you're going to end up with a hard guy, a lot more spawning every time, every single time they spawn. You just do the easy ones, you'll always end up a little bit less. Um, and then the last bunch of cards which you can throw and they have these more for hard mode is extra activation. So if you draw this, if you're in one of the higher ones, they'll all get an extra turn. Now these are very dangerous because again, you could be presuming, oh, these guys can only get one activation a turn. So at most they're gonna move one space. So as long as I'm one space away, if I shoved them on my last turn, they're not in my space. Um, but now if they drew this during their spawn turn, they'll spawn, instead of spawning new ones, they'll all get a move and then on their activation, they'll actually get to attack again. Um, or they'll, they'll during, sorry, because you attack first, they'll like, they'll move into your zone, which they won't hit you, but then if they draw this, they'll attack you. So you can easily die quick if you get one of these. So we have two of those for workers, we have one for tanks and one for hunters. Um, and again, like the abomination, they can get those as well by drawing them extra abomination cards. Um, so that is all of our different components for this game. That is Zombie Side Invader. Uh, yes, really long video to go through everything, but I think it's fun to. I knocked them over. It's fun to take take time to look through all these. Um, so check out the other as I I'll release other videos for all the other expansions. Um, and Kickstarter stuff and whatever content I have. Um, otherwise, check out the other Zombie Side games if you want to see some of the different flavors of this series are. Alright, bye!